Greetings, I'm John Spirit. There will be slightly fewer upgrades in this episode, and welcome to New Omni Factory Super Shorts. There is, however, a big one happening. We are going to improve our Blast Furnace. I have with me an MVCF times 4 and 2 energy input hatches, which are just heavy machine holes with copper cables. If a recipe is running in the Blast Furnace, when you destroy the Blast Furnace by breaking one of its blocks, you will lose the recipe, which is very sad. So I've removed all my items from the Blast Furnace so that I can change some things. Boom, it looks like nothing's different, but now we have MV Energy Input Hatches, and according to the Blast Furnace, it can now operate at HV, which means it will overclock all MV recipes by 2.8. All we must do now is put down our MVCF and shift right click on this side to- Oh, wait, I accidentally broke my LV wires because I didn't replace them with MV wires like I should have. However, I'm about to make some. You cannot simply coat energetic alloy wires in rubber by crafting them. I didn't explain that in the last episode, but in order to do it, you actually need to use an assembler with liquid rubber. One way of making liquid rubber is by sticking rubber sheets in a fluid extractor. There are a bunch of important configurations you need to know, but they're quite simple. Configuration 24 turns one wire into its rubber counterpart, 25 is two wires, 26 is four wires into the four times, 27 is eight wires into the eight times, and 28 is 16 wires in the, into the 16 times version, and you get what I mean? So with the 26 configuration and 8 energetic wires, and finally the rubber from this fluid extractor, I should get two 4 times wires, just like I desire, as we can see. And now I can shove everything back into its proper place and see that, oh, it's moving so much faster. Will I ever need LV energy input hatches again? I just don't know, but I'll keep them for a little bit. And for my next trick, I'm going to set up constant electrolysis of clay to get lots of sodium, silicon, lithium, and aluminium. For my next trick, which I'm accomplishing several months later, so I'm currently figuring this out from scratch. Hi, everyone. Um, I will be using an advanced chemical reactor, an advanced electrolyzer, and four advanced mace raters. I'm going to put signs indicating my calculations on top of these machines soon. I think that's going to be a new system I'm going to use. I will have you know that I said for my next trick completely independently of the video before the last one that said for my next trick. So I... I deflect all blame to my subconscious. Don't step on these energetic alloy wires that are uninsulated or you will die. I am currently in the process of making one insulated energetic alloy wire, and all the other machines are just going to go on top of these. I just don't want to die. I mean, technically, you don't die when stepping on uninsulated 16 times energetic alloy wires, but I didn't tell you that. And just to be safe, since I'm not going to test it for you, don't do it. We'll place down three macerators along this row. This will turn cobblestone to sand, this one will turn sand to gravel, and this one will turn gravel to dust. I've placed this sign here to indicate that each one of these macerators will be creating 2.5 per second of each item. For my advanced chemical reactor, which I'm going to place in this orientation, which I know is horrendous because it's not going to be in the same, um, like, kind of orientation as all the rest of my machines. I'm going to need an endervoir. At some point I'm going to create an infinite supply of water, but right now I'm just bootstrapping, so I'm going to slip four endervoirs right here and then fill them with water promptly. Anyway, water is now filling this advanced chemical reactor, which is going to take dust from these macerators. And the chemical reactor will use four dust every one second and produce four clay every second. We're not going to need that, and besides, we can't even make that much. Don't forget to set all of your machines to allow input from output side, if you want to allow input from output side. Excuse me, I made a mistake, it's actually 2 dust to 2 clay per second from the advanced chemical reactor. 2 thirds clay block and 8 thirds clay dust used per second, so we'll really only use, I believe, um, 1 third of the capacity of this machine. And this advanced electrolyzer will use 0 0.98 clay dust per second. This leftmost macerator will have cobblestone, the middle will have sand gravel, the latter one will have sand. We're going to stick dust, of course, through the filter into the chemical reactor, and put our clay blocks into this macerator, and finally put our clay dust into this electrolyzer. I'm going to set all these to extract always active on round robin mode, just in case. Um, in order to ensure that if we expand this system, these items are going everywhere. Besides, the point of a cobble works is to get cobble, sand, gravel everywhere. Um, according to my calculations, I'll only really be using about 0 0.245 clay blocks per second, which is equivalent to 0 0.245 cobblestone per second, basically, or 0 0.245 gravel per second, which is one-tenth of our current capacity. So this could be used for so many other things. And that's why I'm going to be setting all of these to round-robin mode. 
These four drawers will be for the lithium, sodium, aluminum, and let me see what was the last one, um, silicon dust. And I'll be giving them four void upgrades and four storage up well, one void upgrade each and one storage upgrade five each. And we'll upgrade that over time. I want as much of these materials as possible. We're going to get 0 0.14 lithium per second and 0 0.28 of everything else per second. One by one, I'm going to set these machines to insert so that I can have them all technically start running at the same time and take great pictures for the screenshots at the beginning of this episode. By the way, that quartz stockpile I promised you guys is finally in place. But Jonathan, you may ask, how do you remember things like this if the last time you recorded was several months ago because you're a horrible person? I like watching my old videos, please don't blame me. Another interesting thing to note, you guys are all going to be f confused when episode 8 comes out and you're like, oh, why does he have no acknowledgement of the fact that he spent, like, no time recording videos forever? The thing is, like I told you, I would never upload a video unless I had another video recorded and ready to go. So I've had episode 8 ready to record, uh, ready to upload for several months, but because I didn't have this episode, episode 9, it wasn't being recorded. So you're hearing my posthumous, I think that's the word, posthumous, um acknowledgement of the fact that I spent so long. So when episode 9 comes out, which hopefully won't be after several months, you'll hear all of my apologies, but you won't hear any of them in episode 8. That's okay. Anyway, rather than aimlessly wander about, as I often do when I'm finished with the project, I'm going to declare this project complete. My goal now will be to set us toward the refined circuit bit by bit. This involves a lot of work. A lot of things are going to go into creating refined circuits, um, and I hope we're going to have fun. We'll see what we do first. Probably it's going to be starting to make transistors, and that's probably the first thing we'll be able to do, but that's going to take polyethylene, and polyethylene is a big process, but I'm looking forward to it. I hope you guys are looking forward to it, too. I think probably we're going to work on this ethylene in the next episode, but you never know how my plans can change, so we'll find out. But have a great day. As always, if you have any feedback, I'd love to hear it. I hope you enjoyed, and God bless you all.